Now, although the Earth kind of seems like it's one big rock, it's actually made of a few different parts. These parts, depending on how they move, will make our continents, will make our oceans, and will make landforms like mountains and island chains and ridges and trenches. These different pieces are called plates, and the movement of them is the study of tectonic plates. There's basically three different kinds of plate boundaries that we have. The first kind of plate boundary is a divergent boundary, and diverge means to move apart or away. At these boundaries, the plates are slowly spreading apart, revealing the magma in the mantle underneath. If these two represent the crust, the heat from the magma in the mantle is pushing up on that crust. Once it runs out of space, it melts the boundary line between these two plates and pushes them apart as they slide away on top of that gooey rock mantle. As these spread, the magma coming out cools down back into crust, forming ridges of long volcanic uh, like lines underneath the ocean. And on land, they can create some volcanoes. These are the main landforms that you'll see at a divergent boundary. Volcanoes and then ridges in the middle of the ocean. You can see an example of this in Iceland. Iceland is located here in between North America and Europe. And Iceland actually has a ridge on it sitting in between it that lies on a volcanic ridge that goes all the way under the ocean in between. As this ridge expands, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, starts to spread, pushing further and further apart North America and Europe, South America and Africa. So this ocean is actually getting bigger because it's at a divergent boundary. The second type of boundary is a convergent boundary, and convergent means to move together. At this boundary, the two plates are actually moving towards each other, but they run out of space. They're getting pushed by plates somewhere else where there are two other divergent boundaries. When they run out of space, one of the plates gets pushed up. When this happens, it makes a mountain. Now, this doesn't look a whole lot like a mountain, but basically, that's what you've got. It's getting pushed up, making a mountain range. The other plate gets pushed down underground back into the mantle and melts again, and that's called subducting. So at a convergent boundary, plates are moving together or colliding towards each other, and the things you'll find are mountains, or when they subduct, trenches. Mountains usually start on land, but sometimes they'll start in the water. And when they start in the water, those mountains aren't visible to us until they break the surface of the water, forming an island chain. Some examples of convergent boundaries are here, the Himalayan mountains, in between India and China, which have the tallest mountains in the world, including Mount Everest. And as these two continents are pushing together, they're pushing up the mountains of the Himalayas. You've also got some underwater convergent plates, like here in Japan. Another place where you've got a trench is up here in Alaska. And you've also got these islands that are getting pushed up on the other side of that trench. So these are two plate boundaries that are getting pushed together, and they push up the mountains from under the bottom of the ocean, forming an island chain. The third type of plate boundary is a transform boundary. And at a transform boundary, they're not moving towards, they're not moving away, they're actually sliding alongside each other. You can hear this kind of crunching sound, and that happens at transform boundaries as well. As the plates slowly slide over the mantle, they crunch and crack against each other, causing earthquakes. You can have earthquakes at any plate boundary, but they're most common at transform boundaries, like here in California. To give you a sense of how plate tectonics work, I've gone ahead and put some cream along with some hot sauce into this saucepan. Now, what layer of the earth do you think that represents? Obviously, the hot sauce heats it up a little bit, so it's probably one of our liquid, goopy layers, like the inner core or, more likely, the mantle. But I can definitely make it the mantle by adding a little crust on top, and for that, I'm going to use this cocoa powder. Now, when the plates are moving, we can't really see them on top of the surface of the Earth. They're really slow and they're giant and they move at a pace that we can't understand. So I'll show you what this looks like on a much smaller scale by turning up the heat on the mantle. As the mantle gets heated, you can expect that you'll start to see some movement as it starts to boil and bubble and change. And so then the question is, what will that do to the cocoa powder crust that's on top? When we're heating this mantle, we're representing the layer of the earth that actually is the source of the heat. So the flames down here will represent which layer? If you said it was the inner core, well done, because the inner core, of course, is the layer that is the source of all of this heat. So the inner core is radiating that heat upwards and outwards, heating up the mantle, which then actually heats up the crust a little bit, although we can barely feel it. The only place to really tell is if you find a boundary where the crust is really thin. 
We call those boundaries divergent boundaries. The mantle is rising up because it's so hot and pushing up against the crust. And you can see that boundary right here. There's a little bit of mantle oozing out between the crust here, pushing those little cocoa powders apart. The bubbles you see are like volcanoes happening on the crust, erupting here and there, and as they do that, they widen the gap. These divergent boundaries tend to form these long lines like this, and we call those ridges. They're usually underneath the ocean. And in the middle of the ocean, you'll see a mid-ocean ridge. There's one in the middle of the Atlantic and one in the middle of the Pacific. As they spread out, they spread the ocean floor, floor wider and wider with just a line of volcanoes at the bottom of the ocean floor. Now, there's a couple of spots you can see that are still bubbling up with volcanoes that don't seem to have any boundaries. We call those hot spots. There are some places of the crust that aren't on plate boundaries, but they still are really hot, they're really thin, and the crust explodes with volcanoes. That creates island chains like the ones in Hawaii or the Galapagos. And as those volcanoes continue to erupt, they get taller and taller, and that's what forms the islands as those volcanoes cross the surface of the Earth. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that as all this is moving, everything is shaking. That's because plate boundaries grind against each other and can start to cause earthquakes as well. Almost all of the earthquakes we have, especially the strongest ones, are located where two plates are grinding and moving against each other because they don't move perfectly in line and slide. They're made of rocks and they tend to crunch and crumble.